the introduction should be something like you saying something like welcome to the coach's office all right welcome back to the coach's office we're here again i'm ben smith i'm jb anderson and we're going to talk today a little bit about, we're going to work our way up the hierarchy, talk a little bit about metabolic conditioning and programming for a CrossFit gym and what goes into the programming, a little bit of the theory behind it, um, maybe how you should approach workouts with, or if you want to build your own workouts, kind of ideas that you could use and pull from this kind of topic. So we'll see what happens. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. We want to know what you all want to um, want us to talk about and discuss. We enjoy doing this together. We get to do this together often. Most of the time, we don't get to dialogue with you if you're watching or listening. The only way that we get to experience a dialogue with the listener is if you comment or if you let us know. DM Ben. Um, no, just leave a YouTube comment. Just leave a YouTube comment? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's the best way to do it. Perfect. Yeah, or message one of us on it. On Instagram, that'd be fun. That's right. You can follow Comment me on post. Instagram. If you can find me, I'm not going to tell you my handle. You probably already know his. I'll put it in the YouTube video <laughs> below here. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, yeah, do you know the place that you like to start uh, your programming for the week for yourself? Because w- most people don't know your schedule or, or sort of how your week goes, but... For uh, the most part, you have, it's not rigid in the sense that you do the same thing every, you don't do the same workout every week. No. Um, But it is rigid in the sense that it's uh, the same, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, Same principles Mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so like today's Monday, right? What did you do this morning? And then just piggyback into, you know, maybe like the beginning of how to think through where you should start. Sure. So my, I guess my programming does change throughout the year based off of kind of what time period throughout the season we're going through. So uh, if I'm aiming for this to be my last year competing, let's say, and really taking a shot at going for the CrossFit Games, right about now, I'm working on a lot of like what you call it, engine building stuff, metabolic conditioning, right? But I'm also doing a lot of strength work. So my focus is on those two things, and then I more dabble in the workout, and I call the workout like an accessory, let's say. Like if I do a eight, like let's say a five to 15 minute workout, that's at the end. Like today I did, we came up, warmed up on some machines, did some hard rowing intervals, and then um, did some, did a workout after that. So my focus was on that metabolic conditioning part, and then we did the workout afterwards. The workout so was you like got your metabolic conditioning from the rower today? Yes. Mainly. Correct. Mainly. Yeah, okay. yeah. In the morning. Yeah, yeah. And then in the afternoon, I'll come back and I'll do some lifting. And then probably some accessory work. Maybe if I'm feeling real good, I'll throw in a, another short workout as a finisher or whatever. Or maybe a little bit more conditioning on the bike or something like that. But I've been doing so much on the bike and the rower and the skier lately for this holiday challenge, the Concept 2 holiday challenge. I'm good in the afternoons. Like my morning workout was plenty. So really get after it, hit the high intensity portion in the morning, get the volume in and then be done. Like don't, don't do too, you don't need to do too much all the time. I think it's more important to be consistent with your workouts and your schedule than it is what exactly you do. So I think the consistency and the intensity is the most important part. What you do doesn't necessarily matter but it does, there's nuance in that statement. Right. So the constantly varied part mm-hmm. is always at play in your schedule, though. So your schedule is not constantly varied. It is rigid. It I is try to make it as set. rigid as I can. Right. I guess the I definition can. of schedule is the opposite of constantly <laughs> varied, maybe. But to the point that, uh, that you're making, which is if you're going to... Um, enter into this competitive side know where you want to start where how you want to achieve what you want to achieve and even like the why right Mm -hmm. you know you got you have to know your why for when you're writing on the whiteboard what you're going to do absolutely you're 
you need to know that. And you specifically, um, you know, to my knowledge, you're not like at home, like dreaming of workouts normally. It happens, mm -hmm. but you're sort of playing around with ideas of what you want to do. And then you get in here and you get to the whiteboard and you write down four rounds for time, you know, 50, 25, yeah, or I'll 10, talk it or through with training partners. Right. But sometimes that just like, it'll just come to you and you're like, I want to do this today. I'm going to go for it and do that. I like those days because it makes my thought process easier like it's less things that i have to think about and i just kind of come in and do it you know so people are like oh why don't you get a coach why don't you have somebody program for you that, that's yeah. a really good question of the, take the that coaching off, side right yeah, it, it would take, would take that, that off, off your plate. plate right which i but i always enjoy that part I, it's like it's like coming in and 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 being creative and and put forcing yourself to do maybe stretch yourself a little bit and it's it's something that i know it's personal because i think it's uh, you know a good training programs personalized to you Right. So it's I get to do what I feel like I need to do on certain days. So I, I just feel like, you know, yourself best. Um, but that's what I try to provide when I pro provide programming for other people. And that's what I tell people. It's like it's a good framework. You don't need to do the exact same things like you might need to work on different things. But it's a really good framework to pull good ideas from. So you should be it's like, you know, coaching. There's a, a feedback. A give right. and a take. Right. Same thing with programming for somebody. Like you give them this thing, and they should be they sh should be able to modify it as needed to suit their needs. That rings true, stays true for the relationship between a coach and just a member yes. as well. You yes. know, for your you know for the twelve o'clock or one o'clock class that's going on right now, there is the exact same symbiotic relationship between that, mm -hmm. which. Yeah, do you think that there's any um how much crossover do you think exists there? Yeah, cuz it, it happens a lot in the gym. Like if I'm coaching, I always joke that it's a uh, um you're what do you call it? negotiating. Yeah. The workout like some people will like to come up and talk and uh, talk to you and say, "Hey, uh, I feel like I need to be doing this or my or my shoulder hurts or my knee hurts or something." And it's like you're negotiating with getting the most out of that person uh, and also providing for them what they need at that time. So there's that, or you could just come in and if you're healthy, you're good. You should do the workout that's on the board because that's, you know, probably where you're going to benefit the most from. So walk us through an idea of how to appropriately program movements and weights for a workout. For the gym or for me? So, like, uh, here, let's go back to, we'll go back to the one thing because I wanted to, to point on it, that my program's not completely varied, meaning, like, I have a structure. Uh, yeah. I built the structure <laughs> in, like, 2012. Yeah, it was pretty I funny. I it. I was sitting in the, the kids' room the other day watching my girls, mm -hmm. and somebody came in. I can't remember who was in there, but it was a bunch of people. A bunch of adults were sitting in there with me and my daughters. And um, one of them said, hey, I think they are talking to Georgie. Uh, George, what is the workout for tomorrow? And I was like, what day is it? And I was like, it will have this, this, and this. And then they were like, how do you know that? And I was like, if you paid attention, like if you, wa if you thought about the pattern that Ben works in, you would recognize that this day almost always means this. And it's exactly that. It's a pattern. It's not a guaranteed thing. But it's a pattern. It happens like, let's say, every month or so. When we're doing, we change the movements of the month for the gym, for our affiliate programming. And you can kind of tell that you settle into a little bit of a rhythm and structure and pattern. But then it changes the next month. Bro, I almost yes, have you're, like you're right. Holy Spirit like <laughs> moments where I'll wake up in the morning some days and I'll go, We're heavy dumbbell snatching today. I know it. <laughs> and it will be on the board for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. But I'm sorry. Get back to it. That's because we're on the same you know, same wavelength yeah. connected conscious for sure. Yeah, but it happens. It was super weird. Like it happens regularly. That's cool. So, but yes, there's fun. a structure to it. It's not just random. <laughs> um, although it does change throughout the year, right? Based off of what you're focusing yeah. on. Like maybe instead of, I like to program first my, my, the main lifts, like the snatch, the clean, the squats, the deadlifts the presses i keep it like really basic like the lowest common denominator 
and then I'll build on the accessory stuff. Like today, I call this accessory, but it was a workout. We did 50 GHDs, 30 bar muscle-ups, 15 power cleans, two rounds for time. I call that more accessory work than it is anything else because it was like core. It was just all core. Yeah, the barbell is heavy, and you get some conditioning in there with the barbell, but not too much. But you're gonna you're going to do that workout after your strength work or after your conditioning workout as accessory work, quote unquote, right? Um, so things like that change, and you can get creative with that. But the structure stays fairly similar. You know, like we like to snatch on Monday, let's say. We like to do cleans on Tuesday. Normally deadlifts on Wednesday. We'll also squat on Monday. Thursday is more of like a, a kind of an off day. Some days I work out if I feel like it and some days I don't. But it's a day that's kind of up in the air where if your schedule lines up and you can train, train. And if it doesn't and your body's feeling beat up, do something easy. Go swim. That's like in my normal swimming day if I'm training for the games or something like that. Friday, we kind of like run it back. So we go back to the squats, back to snatches. And then Saturday, clean front squat, maybe, uh, some pulls, something like that. So we're normally pulling heavy once a week, deadlifts, squatting heavy twice, or squatting twice, moderately sometimes, heavy other times. You have to vary this up, and it, you have to play on the other movements. Like, if I'm going to deadlift heavy, I'm not going to squat heavy the next day. You're just going to be, it's just too taxing. Like, you want to be smart with your training as well. You don't want to be too stupid and just lift absolutely to max every single day. So... Try to get one of the days where we do a little bit more of the reps on the rep side, more volume at percentages, and then another day it's a little bit heavier, lower volume, and I just play with those, and we just come up with a good program. It's more of like, I call it art, because it seems more like art than it is a specific program, because you have fun kind of making it up and designing what's best for you, and if you believe that's what's best for you, then that's going to be what's best for you. Um, so I come up with this framework and then I provide the framework to other people if they want it. And it's like a framework. That's what, it's, that's why I use like the blueprint, like that's what the building. blueprint is. That's why it's the blueprint, right. right? It's like a framework for what you would want, uh, some ideas that you would want to build your program on. So it's not like, Hey, follow this program and you're going to be the fittest person in the world. That's, that's not how it works. That's not how any program works. If anybody are, if anybody's selling their programming and they're telling you that they're going to make you a games athlete or whatever, it's not true. That's not how it works. It's just, hey, here's a good framework where you can start your journey towards this thing that you want to be, which is better than you are right now. Follow this and you'll, you'll get an idea and you'll start to recognize these patterns. And then you'll start to feel how it affects you on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you'll make alterations as you need to. And you'll find a perfect program eventually over time if you're trying that suits you Does that make sense do you think that there is um a requirement for someone to be a member at a crossfit gym at uh let's say gifting wise i don't think so or, I think. or ability wise <clears throat> i've always said i think anybody can do crossfit <clears throat> all right do you think that is true for uh the competition side that anybody can compete yes who are you competing with and against so the are competition you? side inserts the the nuance it just peels back the next layer of we believe that the gym is a place for everyone yes and then competition is for everyone because it you're brings right. something out. But it's not competition against... I don't, I'm not comparing myself to you. Right. Depends on who you're comparing yourself to. So well, like, usually, the the things that have made CrossFit so phenomenal are you compete against a clock instead of yes. a person. Yeah, great Or point. you compete against who a that? weight instead of a weightlifter. Yes. And it's removed that from your psyche. Like, you don't even have to think about it. It's there for you. You, you're racing the clock. It's for time. You know, it's for load, I guess, if you want to do that. Um, and then in creeps, you know, looking around and it, what did you lift? And whereas sometimes that, that layer is good for, for another, right? Like, man, I don't feel really good today. My body feels, you know, beat down or whatever it is. But, you know, Joe 
that's at the five o'clock class with me too. I know he's usually lifting around the same amount of weight that I did, and he hit 140 today. So I don't feel as good. Maybe 130 might be good for me today. And then you hit 145, you know, and you make sure to uh, shame Joe on the internet. Just kidding. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. But the, you know, you have this sort of uh, these markers, you know, or trackers like that. Those are competing against yourself though right if you compete against the clock or you compete for load or or something like that you're competing against a former version of yourself or a former performance of yourself is that right yeah and the scale exists in that scenario as well too you're performing against a specific uh movement right because if handstand push-ups are programmed and uh you've been trying to scale into being able to do a handstand push-up then Maybe the thing for that day is just getting the handstand push. It's the PR of yeah. doing one of these things. That's success for that workout for that day. Yeah. Not necessarily beating the person next to you. You need to realize that in that workout where you've been progressing towards handstand push-ups, just getting the handstand push-ups, doing them in the workout is what you should have been shooting for for that day. And then you can continue to grow and you can maybe dabble with the competition side of it meaning dabble with you have a friend in the class that's kind of close to you on this type of workout let's have some fun like you know little trash talk back and forth or something and then go after the workout like that's fun that makes the like it builds the community it builds the builds that class like camaraderie in that class and it makes it it's a good time for everybody so i think the competition is necessary whether it's against yourself or whether it's against a friend or something like that it's healthy. It's not the, um, it has a chance to be healthy and it has a chance to be unhealthy. It's, it's something that it's worth thinking about whether or not, um, you like to, uh, uh, put things up against another or, you know, figure out we, we, you, we always do this. We, we have things in nature that remind us of this where you have, splits in the day right you have night and you have day right it exists everywhere there are so many examples of that uh i was about to say a bunch of other examples that would get me canceled so fast that i'm not even gonna do it the but oh man if shoot my mind is racing with the cancelable things it's so funny (laughs) What was I saying? Let's not go there. That's okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. But what was I saying before You're talking about the night and the day. But right before that. (coughs) We were... I was was listening. I was all into your thought. I was all into where you were going with that. The next part of my question for you was going to be, can you take someone that's had bad programming? Or the question would be something like, If competition, you know, the gym's for everyone and then competition is for everyone, but then we peel back the layer on the competition side. But then the ultimate goal usually of the person that's going to do the local competition or just learn the competition, the symbolic nature of the competition will probably jump into a local competition. Okay. All right. Now that they're in this local competition, it's fun. Like you're you like. You have just now decided to take something else on, which is new pressure. It's completely pressure. different. You've entered a different it's arena. It's a different arena. Different domain. It's completely different. <coughs> Separate it. Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about that for a second, because how can that be separate? Or why is that separate? Because It's different because you're not coming in and comparing. You're comparing yourself then to the other field you're comparing yourself to the field not to your best and you're willing to let you're willing to lose yeah or you're willing to win right right like you have to be you're sacri- you're risking something yeah yes so once you get into the local competition or you've done that or whatever and you think you know what i think i'm gonna try and make a go of this i think i'm gonna try and go to the highest level Uh, i will try and get to the games i guess uh one of the questions would be do you think that specific programming could take a regionals athlete 
who's been struggling, a regionals athlete who's been struggling, and get them over the hump into the games? Is that a programming thing, or is that very nuanced and you know multi-layered? Yeah, there's there's multi layers to that, but depends on the athlete, and it depends on their capabilities. The kind of like their potential, let's say. And then it depends on what they've been doing. So if they've had a decent program that kind of covers all the the fundamental basics, and they've been building the intensity on that, and they've been in like getting better over time. I think stepping out into something new and trying a different program would benefit them as long as they continue to keep those same fundamental things the same, like intensity and their, let's say, intensity in the metabolic conditioning and the workouts and then their strength work. So if they keep those things the same and they try something different, I think it's a, it's a good thing for them because I think switching it up every now and then and seeing and, pers- and uh, experiencing new um, let's say art forms of programming is a good thing. I don't think that's harmful. Do so you know anyone else that programs the way that you do? I Yeah, I would consider my program to be very classic CrossFit. Like it's very classically CrossFit. Back in the day, like all of us programmed fairly simila- similarly. Kalipa, Froning, Spieler, what am I missing? Bridges. All these guys, if you follow all their programming, it's very classically CrossFit. Sure, Scott. Scott. Scott's dabbled, though. Scott's gone in and out, right? So he's... I, d- I don't know. No, I follow Scott, but I don't he's know. Um, yes. I couldn't describe it. Yes, Scott. He's one of them for sure. But it's all very classically CrossFit, and you can tell there's a difference. And then things have changed a little bit. Um, I believe a little bit more towards the metabolic conditioning side, if that's what we're going to kind of touch on today, where you see a lot of programming is very skewed to focusing on single domain uh, metabolic conditioning or single domain weightlifting or single domain gymnastics. You know, you see a lot of that uh, sprinkled in, which is necessary if you're going to compete at the highest level, right? Sort of, but I even have like just, you know, a nuke to throw in this conversation, which is I only think that that exists at the highest level because it's good to watch. It's fun to watch. The single modality stuff? Yeah. It really doesn't serve like a ton of purpose if you think CrossFit really. Depends on what you want to test at the games, right? If you want to be like a decathlon where you have 10 events and they're standard and they're all a little bit different. Like, is that what you want to test fitness as? Or do you want to test fitness as, like, the broadest work capacity possible where I combine these movements together in one workout rather than testing all of them, each of them separately? Depends. So Those are two different, like, domain. Those are two different things, I think. Well, you just described the... I mean, that's a hot take you just said because if, you know, from an outside outsider's perspective i would say what you just described is the crossfit games is as is closer to a decathlon than it is to the second thing you described even though the events are changed every year you know are different every year that that they are changed every year Mm -hmm. however it's you see the same core i mean it's it's very much the same core and that to speak to you know, Dave and what he's doing, the that goes to what you were saying in the beginning. I have an idea. I know the core of what this this test is supposed to have in it. Mm-hmm. And I'm with that. However, there is something interesting in what you described as like the decathlon thing is like, can CrossFit not do that because the decathlon already exists? And or or should it be more like that, because that's an interesting debate. And I'll pick the other side, whichever side that you don't want to take, because I have a decathlon side argument for why I think the games should be that every year. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the game should have a max clean jerk and a max snatch at it every year. Standard. You should come ready to do that. Just that lift, not a complex, no nothing else. Those two Olympic lifts should stand right there as themselves. But... 
so on and so forth. I could keep going. Do you think that you? I like that it's. Di- I like that it's different. I like that. You know you're going to snatch heavy, for the most part, other than a few years, but you don't know what format it's going to be in. You don't know if it's going to be a Wonder Max. You don't know if it's going to be a speed ladder. You don't know if it's going to be at the end of a workout. You just don't know. But I think that I think that's important to the sport because there's that unknown and unknowable type aspect to it that makes it different than a decathlon. Decathlon, all everything's known, right? CrossFit. Yeah, there's no, an unknown. Sure. There's that element of the unknown. That's like the whole idea of CrossFit was founded on the element of being prepared for the unknown. It was developed for firefighters, police officers, first responders, military, right? It was the idea of I'm going to be physically fit for whatever task came at me, that life. That's what we do with the gym. You know, I've done, I used to do where I didn't uh, program the workouts the day before. Like I didn't release them. So people had no idea what they were doing when they came into the gym. People hate it. And then they start to love it. And then I'll change it. And then they hate it. And they start to love it. And then we switch back. It's funny. No, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I get a kick out of it. But the unknown part of it is important, I think. But shouldn't you have a known part if you're going to it's subject known that yourself you're gonna to, snatch. to competition? Like but, what? It's, but that's what it's no. You have enough. You just don't have all of the detail. Right. Like, but wouldn't you want to... So... I guess this is a little bit of my thought is it shies a, uh, it shies away from this point, which is each games isn't the same. So no, are they comparable then I'm if they're not the same side note, last CrossFit games, Dave, that was the best program, the games that I think Dave's ever done. Agreed. The best hundred percent. Hands down. Yeah. All right. Anyways, we'll go back to that. No, we should come back to that because it, point. it was phenomenal. The, but each each year is different. So mm-hmm. and each year can't be compared to the other then. No. So that's I th- but that's that's the cool thing about the sport, right? The sport has to have something that's different than all these other sports. Like that's the thing that brings it uh that makes it interesting. Like that's what It's like, why it has a place at the table is it's is that unknown it's part brand is new. it's something new it's nothing it's never been done before every other sport has their specific rules and it can change it can't change right right it can't change i mean there's the nothing else change. like it it's fun it's it, it's different it's exciting people hanging on like what's next people get to vote on what's next right you know like things like that i think it's great that's why one of the reasons why i like crossfit I think it'd be as an athlete, like your programming would be drastically different if you didn't know if you knew what the tests were. Yeah, drastically different. It'd be very boring, too. That was, again, one of the reasons why I loved CrossFit. Well, this is this is antithetical to your point about regionals. Then what's that? The new format of regionals. I love the new format. I'm calling it regionals. It's what is it? Semifinals? Oh, sorry. I don't know what it is. My bad. Like, it's sorry, regionals. CrossFit. Um, yeah, the semifinals. Uh, I actually like this new format because I I get to go to the next round, and it like sounds kind of cool when you tell people about it, but mm-hmm. like it's not that big of a deal. Like it really isn't. Uh, sorry if that offends anybody that's like, you know, holding on to that next round thought, but. Um, but I, I feel like I've heard you say if you're going to have semifinal competitions, right, that they should all be the same. Like, should the Mac be different than the Dubai championship? Like if these are qualifiers to get you to the games, don't, shouldn't they be the same? Shouldn't every athlete have to pass through the same test? Yes. If what you just said was true, that you cannot compare one games to another. So if you can't compare one games to another, you then you have to have standardized tests leading up to the games to Correct. get to the until games. you get there. and I'm saying standardized across the board to you have to have it the same in each region yeah Even until you get di- there yeah until you get there then it can be whatever whatever you want wherever it to be. you want it to be yeah I don't like that they did different different workouts for different places and it was just all over the place yeah. they tested different things in different places and and the field has gotten so good that different tests will out will create different outcomes different people qualifying i think maybe the same top 
one or two. Like Dave always says, the top one or two is always going to be the same every year, no matter the test. And I'm like, right. okay, fine, I'll, I'll accept that. If you, if I'll accept that, but you have to admit that five through everybody else changes drastically mm-hmm. based off of what's programmed. You're right. So, and five through whatever else is the people that are qualifying. Right. So I think it does matter. For in sure. the in the grand scheme, you know, getting a good show at the games, let's say, a good competition, like an even competition where people can. Do you think in. there's any place at the games for that programming to be the same, like year to uh, year? Yeah, like should there? I mean, f- for instance, like the sw- swimming, you know, like I think it's really fun that all of the swimming events have been different and different distances, and you know. Uh, lake versus ocean and mm-hmm. those sorts of things. Yeah, keep changing it up. Keep swimming though. I, it would, I don't know, man. It There's part of me that I guess the question is wouldn't it be fun to figure out who like see swimming times go up you know, like amongst CrossFitters? You mean if you had the same, the same test? Yeah. You'd get to see the improvements year to year? Yeah. Is that silly of me? Should it, where, like, I mean, they've repeated. It's so hard in the water, too, because you got all kinds of factors, like dude, tides I'm and distances are different in open water than they are in the pool. Like, unless they swim in the pool, then you can see distinct changes over time. But I'm I mean, such a hypocrite. I hate retesting workouts in the open. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. You're right. We're just talking about that. No, you're the right. The unknown it. part of this is so much better. Like not having a set run distance or. I mean, they did like 600 meters or something in the last. It was like 550, 550 meters in the last games, like a sprint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was like just so random dope. arbitrary distance. Right. It's not the test that makes the workout or the test so good. It's the athletes that make the test good. It's the competition. It's watching the athletes challenge each other. I've yeah. heard Dave say that multiple times. That that Saturday, I think, was the day, was so good. The programming of that day was like, it was world class. He really did outdo himself this past year. Absolutely. So when someone's watching the CrossFit Games and they go, because that's usually the, the, um, the aspiration – Something interesting about myself is that I have a hard time going to museums because I'm usually walking around and in my arrogance, I look at like a modern art museum and I'm like, that's poop thrown on a wall. Why? Like I could do that. (laughs) Did this person get paid to do this? Because I don't make a lot of money and I could use some more money, I think, (laughs) if I need to just throw something against the wall. Like I'll do that for a living now. That's fine with me. Um, And I'm usually looking at things that way right that might be personality type that might just be you know who i am at my core whatever where i usually watch something and think oh i could probably do that but then there are certain things in my life that i look at and i don't think i could probably do that i bet you those things you probably don't even imagine ever imagine yourself do like you don't even consider it no like it's not even a thought not at all yeah i don't even try Mm -hmm. i know a lot of those things i've actually like decided like budgeted for some of those things like i know i'm not going to try and learn how to do this because i would rather spend my time and energy and happiness and all of the above on something else sure but this crossfit thing tricks everyone into thinking Mm -hmm. that they can go to the games everyone like even when i was 25 i was like i'm on the 10-year plan i'm going when i'm 35 master's division (laughs) from 31 now no way no there's just no shot and that's okay and i know you will be like bro if you you know you really wanted to do it you know like you got this whatever wrong (laughs) no i don't have the time i'm not willing to put forth the time and energy and what it would cost ding ding ding. i'm i'm willing to do that however that's the but that's like legitimately where my life is Mm -hmm. like if you're saying I wanted to do that, well, it would cost me probably too much, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I know what you're saying. Most people don't know how to, like, arrive at that conclusion. Like, they start and they're like, I got this. 
<laughs> I'm going for it. You know, <laughs> games it is. I remember. But I love that. Like, there's a piece of that too that I just love. Not like in a way like that I'm that. But I so just what love does that stand for to you? Then? It stands for like they're very they're very open minded. They're very they believe in themselves and they want to they want to work hard. As far as I see, yeah, my from my right. experience okay. with those types of people, and they come in and they train really hard, right? Because they're passionate about wanting to make themselves better, and they see that they so that they're statement. big. They're dreamers, right? They dream. They dream big. I think it's important to dream big. Yeah, I mean, I did it. That's right. I you know, but it's like you have to. You ha- that's the first step. Yeah, you did dream big. I mean, you always thought like. Hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to put my all towards this and everything. everything. And I mean, even in that, you know, that video that um, a day in the life of Ben Smith video, your mom's in it on your front porch in the cul-de-sac. And she says something along the lines of he he believes he's going to win. Mm-hmm. I like I'm almost positive it's in that video. Mm-hmm. Um, I could be wrong. The uh, you know, and then you do. Mm hmm. It's it's the first thing that you have to have, and I will never take that away from somebody. Like I'll never go to somebody and say you're not capable of that. That's not my job. Is that a, a biblical principle? And it could be found in other places, but I think about this regularly. Where the uh, there's the verse about don't quench the Holy Spirit, like don't mm-hmm. blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Like that's the that's the worst thing you could ever do in in sure. life. Um, most people don't know how to interpret that. The Bible is very hard to interpret in general. Religion is hard to interpret. It doesn't even have to be Christianity. It, it's hard to figure out. Is this a ethical claim? Is this a morality claim? Is this, is this outside of both of those? Like are, is our spiritual claims different than ethical, ethical and morality claims? We don't know. However, the, what I've come to realize because of the gym and, and the reason that we constantly bring up a, we can sort of fold in the Christian faith, but you can fold in whatever you want on top of this if you want. But I'm always folding in a faith take on this because I don't want to quench someone's spirit that says they want to go to the games. Never. Like it's probably, it just doesn't make any sense. It will happen if it happens and it won't, if it doesn't like there's, I don't have to be that, that judge for that. I don't have to speak that. I know that my, words give life or they take life right like absolutely why would i ever want to do that for someone and that that comes back to like the second episode or whatever when i'm like you're not in the arena why are you letting your words do so much cause so much death or cause so much pain at this point like you're just talking trash it's, or it's 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 deeper than that it's not trash like i talk trash in the gym to nick you know, who's much better than I am at CrossFit, you know, when we're doing a class workout mm-hmm. together. I'll talk trash all day, you know. For fun. Let's say. For fun, yeah. Like, or to motivate him. Like, I sure. want you to do well. Like, you want to do this thing, I'm going to motivate you. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do it today in this one instance by talking trash about how I'm going that, to beat you. Yes, and that brings that, you know, something, that competitiveness right. out in him. Just a, just a little bit more. He's going to go harder, maybe go unbroken, whatever it is. But you're talking about a critic that doesn't, take part in that same thing and they just critique right they they're they're just taking they're drawing they're they're uh, they're a parasite at that point yeah yeah it's just toxic and i'm it's so unfortunate that we have it's almost like we have an economy based on that oh well and as well in certain places like sports commentators yeah I mean, it's the worst of the worst, man. I never like. They might be that. great. I don't like watching any of that, I don't. Yeah. They could be great people, you know. Like maybe we. W- I would love to drink coffee with you, or, um, not eat turkey with you, but no. The. The nature of what you're doing, the nature of that speculating in that place is usually. Uh, or, um, I guess it has something to do with our psychology the way that we're wired and, and what we like to hear and what we like to engage in the most, the the thing that's easiest to engage with is the hot take. That's just negative. Mm-hmm. That point guard, that quarterback, that this, 
you know, whatever it is, isn't worth, you know, a bag of chips anymore. <laughs> well, what if that athlete is actually worth a bag of chips, bro? You just threw out that this person shouldn't be paid to do this anymore. This is like a person's livelihood. This is their dreams, their aspirations, their whatever, fill in the blank. You know, and it's like Stephen A. Smith called, you know, uh, said that Ben Simmons wasn't worth a bowl of Cheerios the other day or something. I'm like, bro, what? Like, because of a bad season, a missed layup, it's a bad game. He's he's down on his luck. His batting, his shooting average is going down. He's you know he's doing bad from the free throw line. His assists per game are down. Yeah, Which those. I mean, those are metrics. Great. Let me say the the part of it like the kingdom's different from the world, right? Like that's the world. You're talking about the world. It's true. You're talking about the spirit of the age type thing. Which is so hard, like, because I don't want them to be separate. I know they're separate, and. But I still think that this gym, like the gym has no tie to Christianity, it has no tie to religion, it has no tie to faith. However, it's symbolic of all of the things that I think hold the highest values. Whereas, and I even think sport sort of exists in that arena too. Like the things we're doing really mimic that nature. Hmm. But the commentary side, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, what if it's sort of the nature of when you're watching the games and they show two people? I think I get it. That person's in the lead. Um, That person does fill some, you know, they fill a lot of seats. They haven't done a better. I know, but they haven't done a. They you haven't know, figured out how the, the sport works yet. They don't know how to do it. It's mm -hmm. not possible. It's very hard. There's no wide angle lens that's. You know, wide enough mm -hmm. you know like I, i'm not sure what the antidote to that is i don't know if there is one maybe it's the nature of the beast maybe it can't happen i'm okay with that that sucks though mm -hmm. like that still sucks like daniel brandon or whatever you know is like being isolated at the games this past year for all of the reasons that were stated um that's hard on somebody's spirit. Like that's really, really difficult. Like, hey, you pretend you know, like you're over here. Mm -hmm. I imagine symbolically that that's how some of the other athletes feel when they make it to the games and get zero camera time, get zero interview time, get zero hype time, whatever it is. Like, and that's the nature of it. I mean, if you're not top ten, if you're not top three. You're not in the mix. You're probably getting zero time. Like, at all. Here's an example um, of one of my vivid memories of you competing. It's the 2017 games. No. 2018 games. Let me just say that's the way that it goes, though. I'll, I'll just add that in. The, the whole idea you don't get any camera time or whatever one you don't go for that like i don't i'm not it's not why i'm at the games and two uh that's pretty normal like the people who people who win they let's say make more money but if you don't win you don't make as much money it's not like you can give everybody an even distribution across the board type thing like it's just is what it is just to play devil's advocate to that other side not to say that it's not important to see value in athletes and that there isn't a story with every athlete, because I believe that there is. But that's a more individual type per, like t type view of the sport. So that's you looking at the sport through the lens that you have, which is, hey, I believe there's a story in everybody. I'm interested in what that story is. Right. Not everybody's interested in what that story is, because not everybody's the same person. you know. Right. And not everybody sees the things the same way that you do, right? So right. Not saying that it's wrong way, because I think it's the right way to see it. But well, you yeah. just made me think of the sort of economic debate of what you just said. You're right. You mm -hmm. know, I do yeah. think that way. Yeah, like, I agree with that like statement. You, econ business, like you believe that yeah. that's the right way to run a business. Right now, there's so many other factors that go into it. Like there's 
certain businesses maybe working with certain people that it might be a little shady or they got their you know hand in the back pocket of the government which helps the business thrive right. and make more money whatever right i'm sure it's the same it's the same way with athletes right yeah obviously yeah uh, that same way with sponsors right. it's that the same in. way with all this stuff this stuff exists doesn't mean you got to take part in it true but where does that start it's like how do you fix stuff like that well you fix it on an individual level when you fix it by fixing yourself it's got to start there that's where all of it starts and people that look for solutions elsewhere they're never going to find them they're looking the wrong places right right the no. story that i was going to tell that i was going to tell yeah. you about was that time you hit that 245 or 55 whatever it was for a double in like three seconds you i think that's 2018 oh that clean ladder that's workout with the bar muscle yes they yeah. ended at 350 is that yeah was that 2018 2018 i think if i and i don't know how i remember that but i think it was i think it's 2018 that was one of the most disappointing i was more disappointed after that workout than i think i'd ever been after a workout in my life and it was that which is interesting you got like fourth or fifth in the in it but i remember talking to you afterwards you'd be like man the 225 barbell felt like death and then you hit yeah. two 350 for a double at the end of it but m the reason i brought it up was you had sort of fell off, but like there isn't any eyes on your lane to the point where the event was almost over and they're like, what just happened? Ben Smith is standing on the finish line. Did he, did he do this? You know, like what was going on? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you just missed an epic double at 350. Granted, that sounds like a harsh critique of CrossFit. That ha sounds like a harsh critique of the cameraman. And the commentators all of the above. The I most understand charitable how thing is I just don't think that they know how to cover. I don't think they know how to cover an event, right? Like the same. Or it's too hard to it's cover. It's too difficult. It's not like I'm trying to be. You need a person on every lane. Yeah, but I, how are you supposed channel? to? What are you supposed to put eight screens right. on the TV? Right, or you ten can't. screens. You can't do it. You no, know? you're right. But uh, yeah, and then the other thing is that mm, people that are watching it, they just see the athletes that got hot. Yeah. And they start following them, and it's like that's not necessarily the person that's going to win that event. If you know the event and what that event kind of like crescendos up to, uh, you got to follow the the people that you know maybe have uh, succeeded in things like that in the past. You'd think they're going to it. It takes some expertise of the cameraman and the people reporting on the or like talking. What are they re announcing? Right. It takes a little bit of knowledge on their part. Yeah, it it it's is. Uh, it's a difficult. It's difficult. It's very difficult. You know, almost impossible. <laughs> right, and I've uh, never commentated a live event before like that, and I don't know what it what goes into it. I You'd don't be good know how hard it. it is. You'd be good at it. I think it'd be fun. It'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it'd be um, fun. But man, sometimes it's so frustrating and it's hard. But with all that being said, I'm very thankful for my experience. Watching the CrossFit Games, you know, in the past, it's been, it's been phenomenal. I, I do like the programming. Um, but it's interesting. The events that stick out to me the most, that I've liked the most, are the ones that like sort of get the biggest scrutiny of, not of yours, but it of like the single modality. Mm -hmm. You like that stuff. You like the single modality stuff. I like watching it. Uh -huh. Sure. I like watching a clean knockout competition. Mm -hmm. That's dope. I, I think most people do, and I think that's why the that's why it's gone that way. It's smart. It's really smart. Like I get it. The best weightlifting event to date is that gigantic clean and jerk. Ascending ladder, in California. In California. In the uh, yeah, the soccer stadium. Hundred percent. That was pretty cool. No, there hasn't been a better lifting event. What I loved about that was it was so cool that you saw, ex everybody failed right around the same couple bars, and you could see exactly what separated the top five from the rest. It was pretty cool. As I, you know, yeah. it's like Dave did a good job laying that out and coming right. up with that idea. I thought that was perfect for that year. It was awesome. Yeah. It was a really, it was a really, really, really fun event. Uh, that I mean, 
among others. I mean, that 2015 games, that speed snatch ladder was really, really fun. That was a good, fun weightlifting event they to watch. They picked the right weights there. It they was picked the, r- the right yep. weights. It's it's hard. It's hard. got to be hard because you got to know the field, and there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, they've done a good job. They've done a good job with them, yeah. that's for sure. So, Do you think that programming exists outside of the gym? What are you thinking? Does... How does it translate to consistency? So what are we? Well, let's go back to programming, right? What I'm I'm just talking and thinking through. Yeah. What's important about a good program? What makes a program a good program versus a bad program? We can start there. For sure, consistency. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's not just the program. That's also your effort and consistency with coming in and putting into that program. So you have to put into that program. But the program also has to provide for you some sort of consistency and framework. Because otherwise, you're kind of like scattered across the board. Even CrossFit.com, follow it long enough, you'll see consistency. You'll see that it's consistently, uh, yeah, over time, it's consistent. There's a pattern, like you said. And where else, what else would you go with that? I think consistency is the number one most important thing. And then I think you have to hit the staples. Like you have to hit the basics. You have to hit. The, you have to hammer the fundamentals. Fundamentals being squats, deadlifts, presses, a layer on Olympic lifts, and then layer on your workouts on top of those. With that kind of background of the metabolic conditioning, it's kind of the way I see it. It's in my head. It's much neater than if I write it out on paper. <laughs> the, no, it was neat even in your explanation. It's if you layer, impressive. think of it like layers. There's like the like the. Uh, the hierarchy, right? But the hierarchy is in my head is a little bit different. The fundamental is the conditioning piece because it's always like you want to be out of breath. You want to be, you want to challenge yourself by getting out of breath in as many different domains as you can, as often as you can. Mm-hmm. That's probably number one. Because I think in the long run that'll benefit you. Mm-hmm. But if you really need to make progress in, let's say, the domain of weightlifting or the domain of specific metabolic conditioning, then you need to take back from that first layer just a little bit and add on the weightlifting or the metabolic conditioning Mm -hmm. to excel in those areas and then return back to the base of getting out of breath in as many possible ways as as you can. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So I'll use Sam as an example. Yeah. The gym. I don't know if you'll like me saying this or not. All right. Sam's a good CrossFit athlete. He knows he's got his PhD in CrossFit. Yeah. Like legit. He just likes work, like just likes working out as hard as he can all the time, and I tell him like, "Dude, you're going hard all the time. Let's get stronger, because upping his strength is gonna up all of that other workout, uh, the framework of being able to push himself harder." I'm like, "Dude, you're so fit. Let's get strong." And he's like, "Ah, I don't want to. I I I like working out too much." I'm like, "Okay, take a little, take a chunk from that working out part." And put it all into weightlifting. I think he's doing that now. And he's been getting so much stronger. That's like awesome. so much stronger. But it, it makes him it makes him better on like he beat me in the workout this morning. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it makes him better at the workouts because he's stronger. But he had to sacrifice just a little bit of that conditioning side where he even though he really wants to, he didn't. And he put it into the weightlifting side that he didn't like as much. And it came back to benefit his uh, general physical fitness. Right. This is the same with a lot of athletes, and they need to be able to recognize that within themselves. Where am I? Where are my weaknesses? Where are my strengths? What do I enjoy? What don't I enjoy, right? And I have to kind of tailor those things and pull from different domains to develop myself as a whole athlete. But that's so personal. Like, you have to know yourself as an athlete, or you have to have a really good coach that's with you all the time or trains with you all the time. Correct. But there's that aspect of programming as well. So what's the trap that what's the trap he's falling into then? Cuz there's probably a lot of people in that trap. It's a good point. So the idea like I like doing this, I'm good I'm better, I'm good at this, I'm better at this, let's say, or I I really enjoy <coughs> doing this. I think everybody falls into that trap of I really enjoy doing this because if you're not making the hour of your day at the CrossFit gym, if the hour of your day at the CrossFit gym is just your hour to come in and like get your energy out, it doesn't really matter what you do. 
like we talked about before, if you just want to look better naked, mm-hmm. right? Just come into the CrossFit gym, work out three days a week, eat good. You're 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 set. You're on the yeah, right path. You're right? chilling. Great. But if you really want to come into the gym and put the effort in, you know, you're gonna need to 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 focus on those certain things that you may not want to focus on, but you want to. You know, you have this idea you want to come in and I just want to row because I'm really good at rowing. And every rowing workout that comes up, I just smash people and talk trash online or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That but then you get smashed in everything else and then you're, you know, you sensitive about other people saying something like that. Right. Or whatever. Like it's a, it's like a personality thing. Like if you're yeah. in a relationship with somebody, it's right. the same thing. You protect the things that you're most vulnerable in. That's a really good point. It makes me crazy when i observe that normally when i i see someone who will use rowing as the example and they just smash they're so good at rowing or they like it and they like it enough to make it hurt more than everyone else right and they they do that consistent with like a few things right but they can't do handstand push-ups. I'm like, you can row a sub seven five k, but can't do handstand push-ups. Let me encourage you: if you spent the same effort and energy and attitude towards yeah. those handstand push-ups as you do in your two k or five k row, right. then you're gonna get or better. Two k, my bad. Two k row, whatever. Yeah. Then you're gonna get better. Right. Yeah, sub seven seven minute five k row. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no two k row. Um, I got you. Our movement of the month is 5K row. That's why you're right. thinking about rowing. The, But there's something in there. It's weird. It gets under my skin a little bit. And and I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's like the coaching side of me. I don't know if the, if it's the ego side of me. Like, I don't know what I'm realizing where I'm like, you don't take, like, what you're doing seems cheap to me. My immediate thought was the more ego type idea. Yeah, it, it it gets my ego somewhere. I'm like, no, not yours. I'm saying, yeah. Are you relating it to like you're talking about yourself? You're thinking about yourself a little bit. Well, just in the in general of like when I observe this happen. Yeah, because that takes place. Uh, like you, it would. I, I don't know if it would if it would be hard for you or whatever. But like, you know, like Sam being you that workout this morning. Does that hurt your ego? What is it? What does that do? What What does that tell you? What is that signaling to you? Is it Wow, Sam's getting really good at this. I should keep encouraging him to do this. That's a good success. That mm-hmm. comes back from earlier. Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, yeah, I wow, t- I'm not. I took it as I need to work on this thing in the workout that I was slower at, the GHDs, let's say. <coughs> right. right. It should signal something to you. Absolutely. Let it's me go back and hammer on the GHDs and right. work on my speed. So I'm going to do some sets of 15 and 20 at faster pace to try right. to get better at my GHDs. So then when I go back to doing a set of 50, I'll be able to keep up with Sam. Which is that kind of thing. Inter- interesting because... If you can set aside the ego at that point, then you're not going to like it won't overcome you. When I'm when I'm upset at the person that I'm working out with or whatever it is and I see them and they just smash this like you know, let's just say like um like very <coughs> I typically get beat um in juvenile movements or whatever it is like row burpee simple movements simple like just yeah, anyone yeah. can do it whatever the higher skill the better the better you, is going say. the better is going to get for me yeah yeah um but it's so sad to me it's a it's a hard defeat for me when that happens when it's like wait why are we why am I getting beat in a burpee row workout to this person who can't do a muscle up? That's crazy to me. Like those two things to me every year in the open. Right, they shouldn't <laughs> happen. Right. No, exactly. <laughs> the open does that every time. <clears throat> every time. What am I trying to describe right now because in the moment that I'm thinking of right now, I'm like a bad I'm a well, I'm you're you're bad. saying no, no, you're just like, saying Hey, give me 10 tests that are across the board, constantly varied, and I know that I'll come out in a better position. That's the most charitable response. Well, I'm <laughs> feeling some type of way in that moment. Like, well, I'm totally uh, judging them. Sure, or sure. Something. But you're right. That's I am saying, saying that. I am thinking that. That is, really, that is really kind of you. Because I am thinking, man, give me nine more workouts. Yeah. 
And yeah, get yeah. Let's go. Let's do another sure nine. But, let's but, do another nine test. But come into the gym knowing that that is the case. Let's say on a lay it out on a month, and you have thirty workouts in a month. You're right. Each one of those workouts is different. Yeah. It's a different mo- domain, different time, uh, different weight, different movements, different combination of movements. Right. You're going to come into the gym and you're going to try to do your best. Let's say if you get ranked next to your 3 p.m. class every day, your goal is to do the best overall in that month or that year, whatever it is. That, let's say it's a month. Mm-hmm. Your goal is to be at the top of the leaderboard at the end of the month if they had a leaderboard. That would actually be pretty cool. It would be, like, be, be pretty on the whiteboard, sweet. did yeah. something like that. It's a good feature. I, mean, I think they probably do. I don't that. know if they do that or not. They have everything. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> yeah, um, they have like every metric known to man. I was always like, hey, you got to tone down the metrics, and, like make it a little like if somebody really loves data, they're like all into it. But like right. it's kind of hard to sometimes see all the other stuff, but they do a good job with getting data. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so it's like your goal is to be the best across the board at all of the workouts throughout the month. And there's going to be a workout here or there where you're not going to stack up against everybody else as good as you'd like to. So how do you respond in that moment? Like, what's your response in that workout? Is the workout, like, you feel yourself kind of fall, falling off? Is your response, well, ah, oh crap, I'm losing. I might as well just kind of slow down. Or is it like all right, let's see how close we can get or, you know, like where am I, how am I going to respond as a person in that moment where I'm not doing as well as I want to in that workout next to this other person who I feel like you should be beating, let's say. Mm-hmm. That's where I see the, the success. Like that's where I perceive it in my head. Like even when you're, even when you're last <coughs> in a workout at the Rogue Invitational, but you still sprint through the finish line. Yeah, that's a really good. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, do you think programs translates to anything else in life for like the average for the Joe Schmo? Like, what is the programming thought, the intentional thought, whatever it is? What does it symbolize for the person that leaves? Like, what does it symbolize for the person's day or week or or month or whatever it is? Is it is it able to translate into other aspects of life? outside of the crossfit gym or do you think it's specific you know just just here no i think it's huge but i think it's the intentionality piece the intentional decision is where it carries over biggest and then insert whatever you're doing intentional decision to i always say this to um to people it's like you know and we're we're hearing it a lot nowadays but like the last like five you know ten years sort of intentional um desire to continue to date your spouse always you know like that's important mm-hmm. right like you want to do that i've been bad at that probably for like the last year or so just since we had kids it's a little difficult it's it's more difficult however i lost focus of that this conversation is going t- i'm going to reprogram cram that program that in like i'm going to be very cognizant of that now like mm-hmm. we do that but you can lose those things but maybe maybe programming the thought of programming here the crossfit gym is the antidote to this outside of like hey you can Hey, you haven't been doing any toes to bar. That's why you suck at them right now. Like, hey, things are things are askew over here in your relationship, you know, with um, whomever, right? Maybe maybe you haven't been doing programming properly over here. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe there's something's off, right? Hmm. And yeah, so you're what you're describing <coughs> sounds like to me is that hey, that's your test. Let's say a problem comes up. That's the challenge or the test. Mm-hmm. You fail or you succeed. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to evaluate that failure or that success. You just said you're failing at uh, dating your spouse as good as you could. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? Then you take that. You say, okay, I recognize that. I acknowledge the area that I neglected. I'm going to reprogram this into my programming daily right. so that I'm going to incrementally, slowly over time, work back until I get to where I feel like I need to be. Right. Right. So that's programming at its finest. Right. So that's but that's what you should be doing or should. Yeah, should be. I guess it what you could <coughs> be doing with almost anything. Right. It would be interesting to me or it is interesting to me when um, when this place, this gym, um, this methodology, whatever is is such a reminder to me of 
something much greater than CrossFit, which um, the principles here have really allowed me to translate into other areas. Like that's a really good one, but that's also a really good sign of the thing you built or the thing you're doing is valuable too. True. I think it's because it's true. Ah. I think that's where like truth comes in. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, unfortunately, sorry. It's so good though. What? Wh- you've been. But it's true. It's like something. If you can take thing, <clears throat> if you can take the same principle and apply it across the board in different domains and aspects that of your means life, it's true, yes. that means it's true, or it's or it's good, or it's right. Whatever you want to call it. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's good... That's what... Yeah. That's what... Like the Bible describes fundamental truths, right? You can take these fundamental truths and apply them in different areas of your life type thing. Yeah. CrossFit takes... CrossFit programming, the idea of programming, the idea of taking workouts and movements and placing them into your program on a weekly basis, and then over the course of time, I progress towards something better than I am right now. That's good. That's true. That's good right <laughs> i don't have a better good. word no it it's right it is and then that kind of spirals out and translates into other domains and aspects of your life and you see that your life in general is improving over time because of this one positive uh domain like the crossfit gym mm-hmm. i think a lot of people see that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think that was why you said uh in the last podcast about you know, you want to put the same effort in this space and you see it carry over into other spaces. Right. You know. Right. It's, uh, um, it even translated over into Young Life. I rewrote all the leaders up on our whiteboard in the office today. And uh, I was, we did like a little summer sort of, you know, four lessons over the summer or whatever, sermons. Or, and, um, the the four sermons lessons uh i just wrote four things down four bullets mm-hmm. i wrote gym was the first one the second one was test the third one was rest and the fourth one was show up again that's good and that was the like encouragement for you know, our mentors, our leaders, young life leaders this summer, like, Hey, get to the gym, like get there, you know, test it, rest, enjoy it. Like enjoy watching a movie and enjoy recovering, but show up again, you Mm -hmm. know, like make sure you do it, you know, repeat. It's good. Could even be the next thing. Which I heard you say that consistently through your programming. Like the simple, like oh, I'm programming myself for this one task, which is to go to the CrossFit Games, to compete again, to keep going, you know, whatever it is. I heard you're going to Waterpalooza again. Mm-hmm. Me, Alec, and Dane are doing Team of Three. Yeah. That's going to be fun. I'm pretty maybe, excited. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Pretty <laughs> excited. <laughs> Seriously. Are you excited about this? Like legitimately, I'll, I'm really excited about it. I will be more as it, we get closer. Oh, so what are you what are you worried about? What's up? Not worried. I'm just not excited. Why not? Um, you don't feel ready. Yeah, want to be there. more ready. I want to be more ready. That's that's yes. feeling beat up right now or something. No, I'm getting there. I actually feel good today. I actually feel like I've been building some good momentum in the last, let's say, week, week and a half. Yeah, I think these mach- doing these cardio with like the machine stuff has been really helping me. Like oh. I feel real like my knees feel way better. That's awesome. Yeah, if, as long as I don't do too much. But I feel like it's translating too already, like over the workouts and stuff. Yeah. It's getting there. We're getting there. It's well, a slow I'm, it's a slow process. And I've been thinking about that. I mean, I kinda yelled at you a little bit about that like three or four months ago. What's that? that? Yeah, yeah. Just get fitter. Yeah. Yeah. That's but what like beat yourself up fitter. on a machine though. Yeah, you like, but I it's a skill. You gotta learn it too. Yeah. You gotta build a base. Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah, hundred percent. That's I'm really excited to watch you guys. I think there's gonna be a lot of people that are really excited to watch. Yeah. Should and be, um should be fun. Alec and Dane are I'm like, I'm excited to watch them go. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just me <coughs> as the brother. Yeah. It's it's gonna be sweet. I uh I'm excited to hear you say this because I gotta buy my 
plane tickets now. I gotta go. Oh yeah, you can drive. <coughs> what? How far a drive is it? Sixteen something. I will never drive sixteen hours. Yeah, but it was a pretty miserable drive to be honest. But like I mean, we had to do like it. A in two the hour of the flight, yeah. three hour flight, mm-hmm. tops. Or why would I ever drive? Because flight always gets delayed or canceled. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I don't know why I'd people Norfolk, don't know Virginia. about your your luck in those flights to Norfolk, Florida. Virginia to Florida, it's bad. Flight. Who did you drive down with? Adam and Alec. Oof. We drove through the night. It was, and then we showed up at eight a.m. and right rolled out of that car. Had yeah. to run a five k. Yeah, with the the fifty cal with assault the 50 bike. Fifty cal assault bike buy in right before yeah. the five k. Oh. I told this story last week. Who did I tell this to? I was like, you'll never guess what happened at the last Wadapalooza that they went to. Yeah. But Wadapalooza is normally a pretty fun But event, you also, so. this is also super funny. You all sucked on the assault bike. Yeah. Because you didn't know the nature of the bike, which was some the people that did really well were getting like 50 cows in like 50 seconds. 50 seconds. But then like, I remember Adam went first and then got off at like 2.30 and I was like, what's happening right now, man? They suck. But I don't remember that much detail. <laughs> oh, I got it's like logged, like yeah, logged, like I don't know why it's logged like it is, but that competition, you know, specifically, probably the all nighter drive. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, it was very fun. Good talk um, on programming. If you guys have anything else to add, add it in the comments. Maybe we'll bring it up next time. Talk about it next time. That's right, and we'll keep moving up. Um. The pyramid, the hierarchy, mm-hmm. and um, w- we know there's a lot more within the conversations that we've already had. So legitimately, yeah, for sure. Tell us what you want to hear. Yep, we'll and talk about it. Quick plug for programming: we got some our affiliate programming that we offer for any other gyms that want to follow what our gym does. We do a movement of the month every month, and then the programming sort of tailors around that movement of the month each month. And we change it; it's fun. Members love it, um, but. Yeah, it's consistent across the board. I program for every, I program, I have been programming for seven years. So if you guys want to kind of, it takes the burden off of your plate of having to provide a program that you may or may not know too much about programming, it just kind of yeah. simplifies it. So it kind of takes that off your plate. So if people want to sign up with what we do here, we have that and we have the blueprint also. So check those out. I'll put the link in the description. Perfect. Hootie hoo.